I wish I could go to that school, Papa. Oh. Well, I, I don't know, baby. It'd be awful nice, but they got rules. You gotta go to the school where you live. Yeah, that's the rule. Uh, if you attend public school, if you can't afford to escape the government's horrible school monopoly. The movie was uh, based on the book, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. It described a family that was desperate to give their kids a better education. The father suggests school hopping by using a house address that isn't theirs. Why don't we maybe borrow it for now? Like, uh, we make out a charge. Then your address would be, uh, uh, 98 Hibbert Avenue. Starting right now. Then you see, they kind of transfer you from your old school. This ain't exactly according to the rules. You mean it's wrong? No, sir. Not by a jugful, it ain't wrong. It ain't wrong. But Kelly Williams Bolar went to jail for it. She lives in Akron, Ohio, and her daughters were stuck in a school that rated second lowest in the state. Kevin Chavis is with the American Federation for Children, a group that's trying to change the rules to allow moms like Kelly to have a choice about where their kids go to school. So, Kelly, you went, they sentenced you to 10 days in jail, which you served. I served out of the 10. What was that like? Um, that was very difficult because I had never been to jail before, ever. When I was in the holding cell, I cried for like 12 hours straight. Um, it was just... And oh. the, the other prisoners, did they say, you're in here for what? Yes, they did. They were, the one lady, you know, she was like, well, what's the matter? You know, why are you, you know, why are you crying so? And I explained to her, and she was like, she was like, really? She was like, that's like nothing, you know, compared to what maybe what she had did. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin, what happened to her is crazy, and yet it's happening all the time, Connecticut, Kentucky, New York, Missouri, parents have been arrested. Yeah, John, it's more than crazy, it's shameful, frankly. I mean, think about it, every state has a compulsory attendance law, which means that you must send your child to a school. Yet they don't guarantee the quality of those schools. The experience Kelly had is not dissimilar to other experiences around the country where particularly low-income people of color are forced to go to schools that don't serve their kids. I mean, we've got 2,500 dropout factories, schools where 90% of the kids are going to drop out, we know it, and people are okay with that, and yet the government's going to prosecute someone who is desperate to get their kid in good school. And why were you desperate? I was desperate because I wanted equality and also safety. And your father lives near a good school, so you just said, oh, let's tell him we live there. Right. His school district was a very good school district, so he wanted me, you know, to enroll him, and I did. I have two girls, and I enrolled them both there. In, in the tree grows in Brooklyn story, the parents who broke the rules are never caught. The daughter goes on to graduate from a good school, but Kelly was caught because now the government school monopoly, which says it's, we're starving for money, but they spend more money to hire private detectives who follow kids and parents around. The district hired a private investigator who shot this video of the kids waiting for a bus near their grandfather's house, along with their mother, Kelly Williams Bolar. They also followed her to her house in Akron, believing she lied to the district about where the kids live. Which you did do. I did lie, because I wanted them at my father's school district, because that was a, it was a good school district, and my father could watch them while I was, I was attending uh, university. And would you do it again? Absolutely not. It, it, cost, it, it was too costly. I, I lost my father behind that. My he got investigated for that. They, they found some law breaking in his past, put him in jail. They sentenced him to a year in the penitentiary and he never came home. And he, he had never in been jail. in trouble. Yes, you, you and he know, had never John, been in trouble. What, what is so crazy and, and sickening about this? I mean, they made her to be and her father an enemy of the state. Uh, they made, him, made them out to be bandits. You know, in that same city of Akron, Ohio, they had 11 out of 25 homicides were unsolved. And yet the venom and an intensity that they went after this family because they were trying to get a good education for their kids, it's just a, something that's inexcusable. What happened to Kelly is happening to more parents. The state of Pennsylvania caught this father sending his daughter to the wrong, so-called wrong school. They, threatened him with seven years in jail. So he signed a plea bargain that let him off with an $11,000 fine. And then he said this. No family should face seven years in jail, not even one day in jail, 
by providing education to a child in a public school. I would think not. So was the prosecutor embarrassed? No. It was a great day for justice, and it's a great day for everybody who pays school taxes. Ke <laughs> but Kevin, what do you say? People pay school taxes at that school. He's protecting their money, he says. It reminds me of Dr. King during the civil rights movement. He said, you have a moral and legal obligation to obey a just law, but you also have a moral obligation to disobey an unjust law.